The thing I love about YouTube most, genuinely, is your guys' comments. And you keep asking me, have I done the keto diet? Yes, I have, but I haven't done it for bipolar or anything to do with mental health. I did it for health and fitness reasons, but yes, I did notice an improvement to my mood. I used to be a personal trainer about two, three years ago, and I thought I'd try it as a new diet. There's a guy on YouTube, Thomas DeLauer, Dr. Eric Berg as well, who make fantastic videos all about the keto diet. They can talk for England about it, genuinely, like go into all the details, bring in all the science and the data, so I thought, gotta give this a go, and I can always test it on my clients to see if they're getting benefits as well. I've asked ChatGPT to explain it to a 12 year old. So the brain usually, so this is the keto diet benefits for people with bipolar specifically. The brain, use it, the brain usually uses sugar for energy, but in people with bipolar disorder, this might not be the best source of fuel. The keto diet switches the brain's fuel to something called ketones and ketones are made from fat. These ketones provide a steadier energy source which might help keep moods more balanced, reducing the big swings between feeling very happy and very sad, or manic episodes to depressive episodes. So, as you know, I've had a manic episode, had psychosis, and all the keto diet I did was since that point in time. So, you, am I doing it now? No. I probably tried the keto diet for about six months and gave up because I thought it's completely unsustainable. And hats off to any of you that are out there doing keto and permanently, but blimey, like honestly, I just, I don't know how you do it. Um, you, to be honest, I genuinely think, if you, if you think you're doing keto, you're probably not. And that's why I don't do it anymore. Because I got these sticks from Amazon that you pee on, these keto sticks. I'm gonna put the link in the description. And when I was trying my absolute hardest to do keto, I was eating the meat, fish, dairy, but even low carb dairy, healthy fats, so nuts, seeds, avocados, and the only vegetables I was eating was like low carb ones, so like lettuce, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, the cruciferous vegetables and like no fruit other than a few berries here and there, I still couldn't get and stay in ketosis. Um, these sticks were showing that I was close, but not fully in it. So I still had uh, like glucose and glycogen in my muscles, carbs being used for fuel. So I thought like, I'm trying this hard, what's the point in even doing it? And yes, you can do it if you probably really, really try and do it over a prolonged period of time. But the truth is that, especially in my life and my world, is that there are a lot of social situations, there are a lot of family events, um, work situations here and there, where you sometimes do need to sacrifice a tiny bit of your diet for half a day a week. And that might be one meal, might be a little snack and a meal here and there, because there's no options, other options available. And you're eating something which isn't 100% perfect. And if you're trying to do the keto diet, that's gonna kick you out for maybe like two or three days. And I felt like it was just stressing me out. But yes, I abs absolutely did notice improvements to my mood. Um, at, at, at first, as my carb levels were draining in to get into using fat for fuel, I noticed a dip in energy. Um, for me, it was harder to sleep, but then once I was through that, it was okay and sleep improved. Energy levels slowly went back up, but still, where I was training, I was doing a lot of CrossFit at the time, and I do weightlifting in the gym, I noticed that I didn't have like explosive energy. So that energy needing to like lift heavy weights to try and get a, a maximum, a one rep max or something like that, or sprinting fast, probably the same as like, what creatine would be used for that explosive hit. Another thing that I noticed was, so if I was doing weightlifting, where you do like I say, it's a bicep curl, whatever, or a chest press, I'd do, go to do eight to 12 reps, which is like standard rep range. And I get to six reps, so this is the fifth rep, and I'd be like six, and then the seventh, 
that just stop. I'd feel great on the sixth rep. Seventh, like, I'd be like, like, where's this energy? Like, I just, it just cut out like that. And that would be the same on leg press, like I say, bicep curls, chest press, shoulder press, whatever. Just to get back to like where I am now. And before keto, I was always pretty healthy. I'd eat whole foods, um, but a well-rounded diet. Lower on the carb side. Um, like barely any sugar at all, barely any bread, pasta. And now that's where I found myself back again, is, is eating a whole foods diet, rich in proteins, rich in healthy fats, which I think is probably more important for your brain health than just doing the keto diet. Obviously you can get the benefits from that, but healthy fats found in olive oil, avocados, nice fatty fish, um, seeds, nuts, bits and pieces like that. Um, but yeah, nice clean sources of protein, not really much processed meat, but then lots of vegetables, lots of fruit. For me, that is the way to go. So no, I don't do the keto diet, but yes, I do eat a healthy diet that absolutely helps my mood. I do notice bigger mood swings and crashes. So if I'm eating like a lot of sugar, I'll get that instant hit of dopamine, I'll feel great. And then I'll start feeling guilty like an hour later. There'll be, I can feel the inflammation in my body, like in my gut, like I just feel just crap. Like my energy levels aren't sustainable. I feel like I need to eat more. And yeah, that's why I always come back to eating a, a healthy, well-rounded diet. This one's short and sweet. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe now. Right, cheers for watching, bye.